Good evening. Good evening and welcome back to the One Celtic Fans View this evening. No, I haven't been on the Super Scoreboard giving it to the zombies. I've been out with the missus for dinner. Hence the reason I am late this evening. Hence the reason it is that I am late this evening. Monetize. It's on, on, on. I'm not expecting too many people on because I am running late tonight. I am actually going to jump on to Sky Sports and see what's kicking on because I understand that Chelsea game might be on. I might just turn the, that down. Just turn the volume down on that. How many people are online? Sinaris is online. Hail, hail, and hello from North London. Peter King saying that Baz is on Super Scoreboard, giving it to the on scumbags. They are on Meltdown. Uh, they probably are on Meltdown. And uh, no, I haven't been on that that uh, channel. Wouldn't have wasted my time, to be honest. Wanted to listen to them for um, audio suggestions. Bit rate lower than recommended bit rate. Open widget. What's this? Stream hell. Anyway, John Mills says, hell, hell. And hell, hell for Dingwall. <laughs> hey, Dingwall. How is everyone in Dingwall this evening? I bet it was a joyous Sunday night for you, Neil Kelly up in Dingwall last night. I bet the pubs were busier than normal in Dingwall, weren't they? Uh, Hill Hill Bro says Paul McDermott and Paul Baird is in the house this evening. Um, just going to put this, I'm going to put Sky Sports on just for a Monday night football. I never usually watch English football, but uh, there we go. Adrian Gunn. Adrian, how are you? When are you back over? Um, uh, 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 can't even speak tonight. Can't even speak tonight. Port Jobs is in the house and Anthony Green also. There's 53 currently online, so make sure you give the thumbs up. The, I've got to say, the live yesterday uh, was fantastic. I think it's probably the most views that a live has done uh, in quick succession. Anyway, we are only here for the Celtic. We are only here for the Celtic. Celtic play... Aberdeen this weekend in the Scottish Cup and Don Robertson is the referee in the middle for the semi-final. Oh, once again, Don Robertson. Don Robertson is back in charge of a Celtic game at Hamden. He'll be joined by Graham Stewart and Stephen Trainer as the assistant referees and the fourth official will be David Dickinson. David Dickinson, doesn't he do property programmes? Anyway, and on VAR will be Greg Aitken along with Andrew McWilliam. Andrew McWilliam. Yes, and that'll be your as VAR assistants. That'll be your VAR people for the game this weekend. So that is, that is they've put out their best. Anyway, let's get into the comments. We're just going to jump right into the comments tonight. Hazel says, um, even though Paul McDermott, uh, Paul Baird says, hail, hail. Adrian Gunn says, good weekend. Hail, hail for the North, says Port Shops Express. How's things, mate? Absolutely fantastic, Tony. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. I've had a fantastic day, actually. We did the Celtic video this morning, and then I uh, went and seen some customers for my, 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 the company that I have here in Spain. And then... What was the... Went for a meal. Attended the veg garden. Yeah, that was about it today. That was about it. it was a, pretty much a relaxing day. Still drunk from Ireland, but as says Martin, um, we're always eager to gloat. Yes, we're always eager to gloat. Sevco, uh, who's the Sevco? I've not even checked Chill Pill, and I'm not going to check either. I'll probably I'll check towards later in the week. I'll check later in the week, but I'm not checking tonight. Lorna Gallagher is in the house this evening. How are you, Lorna? Um, hope we're all good. And Denny, Paul Grant, is in from Denny, fantastic part of the world. Anyway, we spoke about the the referees. Um, I could go on to the Scottish FA website. Oh, I fucking can't be asked. I'm being far too busy. Anyway, Celtic. Celtic, there's, come, there's news coming today that Celtic are to turn the former media room into a new hospitality suite. A new hospitality suite at Celtic Park. As if there's not enough hospitality. See, one of the things that a lot of fans don't realise, a lot of things that fans don't realise is there's a vast array of people that are allowed to buy alcohol at Celtic Park at half time. Round the full stadium. Round the complete state. I think the only side of the stadium is the way end. It's what you would class as the Rangers end. So from the Green Brigade round, that is the only part of the ground where there are no bars at half time. Is it time for that to change? 
is it time for that to change? Has has the football fan in Scotland grown up enough to not cause mayhem? Would it be um, a good thing for Scottish football to be able to have a swally at half time? Considering it happens all round the stadium. It happens all round the stadium. It happens right next to the North Curve. Happens right behind the North Curve, Celtic. Um, it happens on the North Stand, the full length of the North Stand. And then it happens all the way around the stadium right to the main stand. Is it is it time for Scottish football to be more grown up? The ban was obviously brought in place for the 80s. The ban was brought in place in the 80s because of the, the hooliganism, the hooliganism that went on in Scottish football back in the, the late 70s and early 80s. Um, and I think we've grown up a bit by then. But according to Police Scotland, the, the fans haven't. So it's just an interesting take, that the fact that Celtic are bringing out a brand new hospitality suite so they could serve even more drink at half time um, and it's going to be in the old media room it's going to be in the old media room at Celtic Park the Glasgow Licensing Board has granted permission to Celtic to sell alcohol from a, a room on the fourth floor of the North Stand the North Stand yep so that's ab above the lounges that are already there mm, interesting the club applied for to vary its premises to license, uh, looks like, to en enhance the match day offers for fans. Well, it's not paying fans. It's not council estate fans. It's not fans like me and you that just pay your 600 quid a, a year to go and watch Celtic, is it? It's No, it's for people that are wanting to pay a minimum of two grand for a season ticket. It's not for the normal fans, and it's not enhancing the match day experience at all. Let's fucking get that out there. Um... Licensing lawyer Steve McGowan, representing Celtic, told the board that it is referred to as the LSV Suite, which stands for the Light, Sound and Visual Suite, um, but has now been turned into a suite. It used to be the press room where the press packed the technical wizardry, etc., etc. This is now has moved and it's become an empty space. The club are looking to do something with it, with that empty space. It's relatively modest. The suite would accommodate 20 people. The club and staff are very well experienced in operating in these types of areas. So it's another it's another lounge where you'll get people that will pay upwards of two grand a ticket to go and sit. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's not beat around the bush. It's not for working class fans. Anyway, I wish I was 600, I'm 730, says Chilpil. To be honest, I've stopped looking at what my season ticket costs back home because somebody else pays for it. So um, I don't really even look at it anymore. 730 Chilpa, where are you sitting about? Where are you sitting about? Lorna, uh, probably won't come out. Uh, John the truck driving legend says, let's get him off as fine as drunk for half time in the religious drink of Buckfast. There you go. Go on yourself. Respect to the staggies. If you Benny been off our boy. Uh, Brendan, to stay Paul. What's Paul saying? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to remember, Paul's one of the ones, and he's stuck by his words the full season that he wants Brendan out. But, um, John, the truck driving legend, said, uh, work from delivering in Fort William and Oban. There we go. Even if we're in the double, he still wants Brendan gone. <laughs> You've not got a hope in hell. Anyway, let's see what other Celtic news is kicking around because I've not looked for about two or three hours. <laughs> Um, Rangers to land Ibrox bonus. Uh, oh, six fixtures. How are Rangers going to land a bonus? Rangers, uh, so it looks like we're going to have an away trip to Kilmarnock and St. Mirren. That's all right. If that's their away trips, so be it. So be it. Still win the league. Still win the league. It'll probably, we'll, we'll be at home. I reckon we'll be at home the last game of the season. So, Dundee at home, last game of the season. Interesting. The second game was in Jones Command Irish, which means they'd have played an extra game on their own. Tough, something. Scum paper talking about stuff. Um, 
pundit makes definitive Celtic statement. Who's this? Go on this. We'll quickly read this. Who's the pundit? This. I'm going to read that. <laughs> ah, that's it. <laughs> um, Pat Nevin named superb Celtic player who stepped up in Callum Graham's former referee. He says Hattati should be banned after Saturday incident. Oh, fuck off. Joe Hart focusing on the fixtures. We've done that this morning. Celtic Park to enhance experience from next season. Oh, come on. Celts are here. Come on. Celtic are not enhancing the fucking art. It's a fuck it, Jesus. Don't bum the fuckers up. Do not bum the fuckers up, right? It's a new hospitality suite on the fourth floor. It's fuck all to do with the normal fan. Stop buying into this bullshit that the club's saying it's, it's enhancing the fan experience. <laughs> Don't, please. Celtic bloggers, do not fucking bum up the club when they're not doing anything to enhance the, the fan experience for the working class fan. Right? This is a bullshit fucking headline crap. I've paid two grand a ticket. Right? It's not worth it. You get fucking pies at half time, you get sandwiches at half time and a cake. You've still got to buy your beer. It is not worth it. If you can afford it, it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, I afforded it for, I afforded four seats, uh, two seats for f two or three seasons. But would I go back to that? Not a chance. Not a chance. Anyway, how do you get money from Fringpong winning the league with Bayern? Um, Mark, I think there's something written into the contract uh, and it will be with performance. And when it comes into the performance side of it, when it comes into the performance side of it, there comes along winning leagues, winning cups, and things like that. That's what the performance-related items usually are when it comes to contracts like that. So if they were to come in and, and if they'd won the cup in their first season and Fringpong was there, they would have got an extra 200 grand. It's added bonuses. It's 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 the, onto the, um, the cost of buying the player. And usually within that is winning the league. So if they've won the league, uh, there should be something in that. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. I, I don't know the ends of his contract, but um, there usually is something along, and it, it comes under the bonuses, uh, performance-related bonuses, and that means winning cups, winning leagues, getting into the Champions League, shit like that. So there you go. Baz, do you think that the Irish international keeper... I have no idea. I've never seen him playing. Fring Pong will be one of the best players. John, the truck driver legend. Happy Haggis Paella on Paella. It's Paella. 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 Happy Haggis Paella on me. Thank you, the John, the truck driving legend. You are an absolute star. Um, right. Uh, Lorna Gallagher has put me in the swear box. I need to get one, don't I? I need to get one. I'm glad I'm probably one of the only Celtic channels that just tell it as it is and swears like a fucking trooper. Um, it doesn't affect the monetization, and um, you know it's within the terms and conditions of YouTube, which I have vast knowledge of. Which I have vast knowledge of. So, uh, uh, Michael Rose said, if folk are daft enough to pay stupid money for corporate buy law, good make the club money. It does make the club money, and I've got to say I, the reason that I'm, hey, I'm talking about this. I've never really spoken about this. But I, I obviously sat in in one one o and one 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 for a lot of years, and I always said that the time I hit forty five, I was going to have, and this was something that went away back to when the stadium was was first revamped. I always said that the time I hit forty five, um, I would have one of those leather seats because I think you get to a certain age where you you should have achieved enough in life, and and my own personal belief. My own personal belief is you should you should have achieved enough in life to be able to reward yourself. And and I seen I seen getting the leather seats in the north stand at, at Celtic Park is me rewarding myself for a lot of the hard work that I'd done over the years. When I went into them, it's all right, you'll never get seen. The hand of God is sneaking in. So it's only a fanta lemon. Anyway, um, going back to that, yeah, it was one of those things that when I hit 45, I was like, I'm going to have one of those seats. I want to experience that. I want to, I want to experience the the finer part of um, corporate football for a couple of seasons. And I've got to say, a lot of people sort of 
disowned me that went to the games, and especially for one one one, and they thought I'd sold it when I, I took up the seats within um, four two eight was the section four two eight, even if it's on the bottom of us. Um, so yeah, and I just seen it as that. I just seen it as a way. That, you know, I could afford it. I could get a pint at half time. I didn't like it. You could then fuck off to the pub. <laughs> anyway, yes, it is nice. It is nice. The food's okay. You can't buy a pint until every single player is off the pitch, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. You could go in and order it, but you can't actually get it handed over to you until every single player is off the pitch. Anyway, let's get back to it. So that's just a little interesting bit. Yeah, that's why. And I'll show you the ticket. It is there. There we go. Oh, so there's one from the 1718. So this is what your season pass looks like. Uh, wait a minute, I'll go to the other camera so I can see myself. So this is what they look like. Club Celtic, hospitality, 2017, 2018. And there's that one. There's two of them together. Look, 17, 2018. There's one, Club Celtic. What was this one? That's the eighteen nineteen season. Oh shit! <laughs> it's got my season ticket number. Hide the season ticket number. There we go. And uh, that's what they look like. <laughs> Club Celtic. And I've just given my full name on. Yeah, who gives a shit? Anyway, yes, that's what they look like. It was always an ambition. It was always an ambition, and I think it's something that probably... And by the way, uh, I had to eat front sandwiches. Michael, I did for two seasons. I did for two seasons. Um, and I know people who sit in near enough every corporate side of the ground. And it was funny because when I came out of 111, the, uh, we always knew that we had people in every single part of the ground that had a connection to the Green Brigade. There's even someone who sits in the main stands who at the time had a connection to the Green Brigade. So there you go. There you go. We were all over the ground. We knew everything that was going on. Bar's just shown off now. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. It's uh, you, If you work hard enough for it, you need to reward yourself. You need to reward yourself. And it's something that anyone should be able to do in life. Work hard and reward yourself. John, you, you need to get Kev one. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, John, you get one because Kev used to take mine all the time. Anyway, is John on? Is John on tonight? Did I see him? Did I see John coming into the chat? Uh, not too sure. Anyway, let's get back to something. Going. Sefco Hearts uh, Dundee at home. Yeah, and I think it'll be Dundee. Will probably be the last game of the season. It won't be Hearts. It'll be Dundee. If we look at it, it'll be Dundee. That'll be the last game of the season at home. My right, boys, do we get any money with Frank? I've done that already. Let's jump through some of these. John, John, even John, you are in the house. You are in the house. There, I've seen you. Yeah, I was there Saturday bars. <laughs> Donna pies are amazing. Were you in corporate? Were you in corporate, John, or were you just uh, were you in the club Celtic lounge? Um, Baz just shown off now. Not at all. Not at all. Joseph says hi, Baz. I hope you see your wife and the girls with you. Mas Matu. Kids had season tickets from the age of around about six or seven. They had their own season tickets for the age of about six or seven. Uh, we should do a ticket exchange thing. It's just... <laughs> I don't have these seats anymore. <laughs> don't have these seats anymore. Um, not uh, Back down in the council seats back in 110 is the seats that still have their surnames on them. Tickets. Anyway, I'd rather stand in the jungle with my comrades in the post seats next to those asshole board members. But Michael, sometimes it's good to have people in places like that because they, we then get information. And information is uh, one thing that's always been a must at Celtic uh, when it comes to the, the cops looking at what's going on in section the well what was old the still stand the old standing section. Um I'm just yeah. Anyway, let's get back to talking so I'm not talking about you guys, I'm talking about in general. Yeah. 
Kerry Dale Street. Ah, the Kerry Dale Street. John, that's nothing compared to Kerry Dale Street. You get chucked out before the game starts. Club Celtic is the one where you are actually... He's picking another video. He's sky. Right, anyway. Boy, if you've been offered a killer, would be a tough game. And the title running. Yep. Uh, Derby game will be rubbing salt on it. Sometimes the guys next to me leave at half time and go to the pub. I've done that many. I've done that when I was in one 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 a few times. If the game's absolutely crap, if you or if you've got the game tied up, remember there used to be times where Celtic would be comfortably winning three or four now. Wait a minute, I'm going to open this window two seconds. The most in here. Absolutely boiling today. Anyway, is anyone up in Benidorm that watches the channel? Because I'm heading up to Benidorm tomorrow and I might do tomorrow evening's live from an Irish bar in Benidorm. Just saying. It's shite that one of us are waiting on the list for years and fans don't even go. And fans do go, but you've got to understand that people work in that as well. But we do need some kind of we do need some kind of ticket exchange. The ticket office told me when I was picking up a new season ticket uh, that I lost that there were 17,000 on the waiting list. Jesus. 17,000. But if you're willing to pay two grand a ticket, you'll get one like that. You'll get one like that. Anyway, right, let's get back to some Celtic news. I wish I could say the same, mate. Da -da -da. Do you think we should upgrade the main stand um, so it's all the same height? Davey, that would cost in the region about 100 million. Um, they, they cannot knock the building down. And they could see if they would build in Scotland like they do in Spain. You'd be able to do it all day long. Um, you could quite easily, you could quite easily build a concrete and steel frame over the top of the main stand and then house the new tier above it quite easily. But there's been suggestions say that it's going to cost the best party a hundred million. Celtic will not invest a hundred million just to go in that one stand, considering I think the original stadium only cost around about 30 to 40 million. I'm not sure, I, don't quote me on that. But, um, <laughs> Andy says it's freezing. Um, a bigger stadium would the bigger stadium be the only thing that, that would get me about a bigger stadium is that, and it's something that used to annoy me when I went to games. Something that used to annoy me heavenly when I went to games is and people that leave early. Because it's not something that we usually done did as a fan base. We always stayed right to the end. We always stayed right to the end. But creeping into the game now, into the modern game, is people leaving when we're winning with about 10 minutes to go. Five minutes to go. And the amount of goals that Celtic score in the last five minutes uh, to five minutes of extra time, five minutes of normal game to five minutes of extra time, um, I think it's, un it's, it's unbelievable. And I know that people want to beat the traffic and, and too many people go in cars these days and it's, you know, it's... <sighs> that would be my only concern is that people would treat it a bit more like that and you would get more people leaving early. And then you've got to look at the likes of the bigger clubs down, down in England where the club then starts selling them to these ticket companies who bring in tourists and then you've got a stadium full of folk that are just sitting on their phones taking videos <laughs> like that I did back in the day. <laughs> and I did say, look, what I'm doing will be the norm one day. And I was laughed at. And there we go. It's an, it's the norm. I found another channel yesterday that's in the Celtic end. Um, uh, no, he's, in, he's actually in the Rangers end. But he, uh, anyway, we're moving on. Uh, boy from Benny Offer, open the window and freeze Mars off in the North Sea, heading back to Spain on the second door. Good for you, Benny Offer, boy. I have just opened the window. Uh, we could do an exchange ticket thing. Yep. Uh, uh, the leaf, when we're, even when we're not winning. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. And it is brutal getting out, Chill Pill. It is. It's, um, I used to pre prefer it when we're on the bus because. When you're sitting in the bus park, you're waiting for the traffic to clear and then all the buses go out. That many people go in cars these days that you can be sitting for half an hour on the bus. Anyway, demand 150 million. 
for McCarthy, and there's the stand, McCarthy. Jesus, McCarthy, yeah. Uh, I never leave the game early, even at Celtic Park, Paul Beard. I've got pictures on my Facebook of me inside Celtic Park after a game, walking around for the North Curve, when there's hardly any day in the game. It's probably about 10 minutes after the game's finished, and there's probably only around about a couple of hundred people in the stand, in the stadium. I've got loads of pictures like that, loads of pictures like that. 40 million for the stadium back in the day. Well, that was back in the day, Colin. It was a long time ago. And Fergus McCann came in with a business plan, a five-year business plan. And he spoke openly about his five-year business plan. He spoke openly about it saying, Look, this is what I'm going to come in and do. I'm going to spend this money. I'm going to make sure that we win the league. We win the, uh, we win the Cups. And that we put Celtic back on the map. And he did that. I think if the current board... I mean, Brendan Rodgers has spoken about it briefly. He's spoken about the 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 short-term, the medium-term, and the long-term plans at Celtic. I wish somebody for the board would come out and do it and have the balls that Fergus McCann had back in the day. I think I think the board would get a lot more respect if they did that and, and, and it would see an insight into the planning, what's going on. Because Celtic fans want to... Celtic fans have an absolute thirst for information from our club. And there's a there's a big lack of information sometimes coming out of the club. I think the, I think the club could definitely do better... Uh, with that respect and to communicate in terms to the medium and long term of the club. And I know that they do it. They have meetings with the the Celtic Supporters Association and, and other things like that. I mean, there is a lot of meetings going on with the club, but with the wider public don't generally get to hear this information or it comes out second hand. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. I've been out of it for about four years now. So, yeah. A long time. It's a long time, and a lot of time. A lot of things change in four years at football, and I could tell you that. And anyway, John, I was there Saturday. I couldn't believe the amount of fans sitting quiet, not singing. Credit to the boys, though, they never stopped. Yep, uh, to that. Uh, the South Stand can't be listed as it's uh, didn't rip it to shreds in the in the eighties. Yeah, they reformed it in the 80s, and that's why it's now a listed building, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Considering they the knocked the old school down, uh, the school that was the, behind the old ticket office, remember, that should have been the museum, if you ask me, because that old building was a listed building. But they knocked that down, and they turned it into a car park for staff. Anyway, what happened uh, to the hotel, museum, the club shop we heard about uh, before COVID? Yes, David, what happened to that? Celtic have now decided to pump the money into and the academy, 20 million into the academy. Me, personally, that should have been done a long time ago, but what's the what's the point of Lennox Town? Why not have the academy training out of Lennox Town? I know it's further for parents to take the kids out to, to Lennox Town, but the hotel would bring in an income straight away. That, that that hotel at Celtic, there's not a hotel within Glasgow that has 100% empty rooms every night of the week. I mean, I used to book hotels for my work when I, when I worked in Glasgow sometimes. And, you know, you could easily, you could get hotels, but they weren't empty every night. Celtic build that hotel, that would be on a, on a week, on a, a game day, filled to capacity. Filled the capacity every weekday, and it would be booked up by the Irish way in advance. Way in advance, I tell you that they would book as soon as the fixtures came out for a season, they would book up the hotel for the whole season. You would not be able to get a, a, a room in the Celtic Park Hotel, you'd have to book a year in advance almost. You'd have to take a, a guess and try and book a year in advance. And a lot of them, some of them would book for two nights. But anyway, anyway, we're talking about stuff that we have no, no control over whatsoever. Let's get back to the Celtic news. Obviously, we got into this conversation because there's a new hospitality suite at Celtic Park in the North Stand, transforming a former media room into an exclusive area for fans to enjoy next season. It's a room that holds 20 fans. 
Oh, uh, and the media are pushing out. Celtic are pushing out. It's, it's enhancing the fan day experience at Celtic Park. Anyway. Right, let's see if we get some Celtic news. Oh, wait a minute. Preview. Celtic away. Hibernia and are talking about Celtic. And where is it? Oh, no, that's for the B. That's for the women's. The Sun gives two reasons why Rangers aren't out of the title race yet, as Ciro is Celtic hero borrows Chris Boyd's playbook, is a headline in one of the rags. Uh, Green Brigade Tiffo doesn't go to plan. Was there a Tiffo meant at the weekend? Oh, the wind got the Tiffo. Celtic Share actually done a video about that. Uh, it... Oh, that's... Um... I know his YouTube channel that is. It sits in the main stand. Yeah, it didn't go to plan, did it? The wind got the wind got the better of the tiff at the weekend. That can't be helped. Can't be helped. I don't don't see the need for a blog to highlight the fact. At least it, at least it was the wind and it wasn't spelling mistakes and and complete nonsense that um the union bears do with their tiffles. They look like saying that the Huns are still in it. They are still in it. If they win their game on Wednesday, they're one point. We, we are not, we're not out of the woods, as they say. We're not out of the woods. It's all we play for. Like the name of the video says, let's stay calm, Celtic. Let's stay calm. It's all good us beating uh, them getting beat at the at the weekend by Ross County for the first time ever in 25 tries. But Celtic fans, as Celtic fans, we can enjoy that little moment. The Celtic players, they wouldn't have been getting carried away. They'll be staying calm. They would have went back into training today. They would have looked at the video from the game at the weekend. They would have spoke about it in the dressing room. Spoke about how they dropped points and then and the excitement that it's all in our hands now. And we just take it one game at a time and we need to focus on winning the league. It is as simple as that. So let's stay calm. And I think that when you look at it, it could be only one point. It could be only one point. When they come to Celtic Park, I think we'll beat them and that'll put it back up to four. I think that they will still drop points and I'm still going to say what I said at the weekend. I think Celtic will win the league by seven points. And if we win the league by seven points, the fact that we dropped 10, 11 points midway through the season will be extraordinary and absolutely, it will be a fantastic turnaround um, and a complete 100 million percent meltdown by that lot. Because not only did they change change manager in the middle of the season, change manager in the middle of the season, they, they, um, they brought in a manager that they thought they could turn us over. We went through a bad patch. They haven't under him as yet. So this is now his bad patch coming. It's as simple as that. You can't go through. It's very unlikely. It's very unlikely that Clementine could come in and be a success for the full half of a season without having a bad patch. Every single manager goes through a bit with, and you would prefer if it was, I mean, if, if that was us, you'd prefer the manager to have had his bad patch at the beginning of his tenure, but he didn't. He came in and he hit the ground running and um, do you know what? Now is his bad patch. So, so be it. It is football. It is football. The momentum, Davey, is right. The momentum is with us. The momentum is with us. They know that they've got to come to Celtic Park. They were hoping that we would get absolutely trounced at Ibrox. Absolutely trounced at Ibrox. We scored in the first half a minute, and that knocked them on their arse. Absolutely knocked them on their arse. They then come up, go up to Ross County, thinking that if they beat Ross County, if they beat Dundee, they're top of the league. Simple as that. The top of the league. A draw was not what we wanted at Ibrox, but it's what we've got. A draw, as far as they're concerned, only benefited them. They thought they were going to win at the weekend. They didn't. It's as simple as that. So, 
Rogers' bad patch was injuries, Tamak says. Yes, I think Rogers' bad patch has been the injuries for the full season. Uh, the full season. If we win the league, uh, we'll have won it in second gear, says Michael Ross. Would we have won it in second gear? Is that is that being disrespectful to the players that have came in when our main players have been injured? You could say that is the case, but it, it could also say that the players that have came in are nowhere near as good as what the players that have been out injured. And when you look at it, the players, the majority of the players that were out injured were players that were here last season. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, you're right, mate. We had a bad patch. Uh, we were very clinical, second half, but still uh, haven't been for 90 minutes. We were against Dundee. Dundee, we absolutely annihilated them when we played Dundee. We played one touch pass, one touch pass, and it was fantastic football to watch. And it was a bit like Brendan Rodgers of old, his first time around at Celtic. So um, I think if we can get a few performances like that between now and the end of the season, we should do not too bad. Joseph, he will buzz uh, the points we get when we win the league. And one, uh, what even spoken about? Yeah, no. I think if we do win the league, it'll, people won't look back. If we win the league, people won't look back and look through the the start of the season where it was crisis. Everything was crisis. Celtic in crisis. Celtic in crisis defensively. Celtic in crisis midfield with Rio Hitati out injured. You know, it was all Celtic crisis. And you could see the, the narrative of the media right from the very start of the season. They weren't wanting Brendan Rodgers to succeed. They wanted to make sure that he failed. They wanted to make sure that Celtic were knocked back down a peg and that Rangers, and that the Ange Postacoglu era was just a blip in Rangers' thing. It wasn't. What was the blip was the 2020-2021 season where COVID and no fans was the blip. They had no fans at Ibrox. They still couldn't win. You've got to remember, they have not beaten us this season. They've not beaten us this season. So, um, John the Truck Driving Legend, I'm I'm going to do a video about Gaskin Park at the weekend on my other channel, Explore with John, sort of the shameless play. John, don't be sorry about that. Put it on one of my videos and uh, put it on, in fact, go on to, John, go on to the community tab and try and put a link up there. It'll probably come up as hold because you're trying to put a link or if not, if you're on Twitter or Instagram, message me on them and then I'll put it up on the community tab and give you a little boost to the channel. Okay? Deal sorted. David, uh, the new Champions League is 70 million for us. O'Reilly is going to be for 30. There's a new main stand. It's not going to be 70 million. I think I think the, the top money is about 60 million. I think we start off at around about 30 to 40. Um, win the league at all costs, yes, definitely. Uh, Celtic said, hey, we prove ourselves against Hearts and Kilmarnock this time round. We need to, we need to, we need to sh show ourselves against both those teams. We need to win. It's as simple as that. We need to win. We need to win. Uh, Buckle Boy says, I was confident uh, at the start of the season. Uh, looking at Adam either, I wasn't confident, but he's definitely proven wrong. Buckle boy, I said, when you look at Adam Eder's stats, a lot of people went on about the fact that he was a third-choice striker and everything, but when you look at his stats for games that he played, he'd scored a cracking amount of goals. His return to goals, to playing time, was actually really good. Hence the reason that I said, when he came to Celtic, that he'll score 10 goals between now and the end of the season. He's on seven goals. He's on seven goals. So he's kind of continuing the stats that he had at Norwich, but He's, he, he's played a little bit more game time. So I think he's I think he's a cracking player. He's only young, remember. He's finding his confidence. And if they're wanting six million, so be it. Pay the six million as far as I'm concerned. I don't want to piss around and try and get another striker in that's not fully committed to Celtic. I think if we can improve him as a player, you've got a, a, a type of John Hartson, maybe even a Chris Sutton type player on your hands in years to come. You've got to remember, he's only 23 or something, isn't he? When we had Hartson and Sutton and that, they were in their late 20s when they came to Celtic. So, we'll see, we'll see. 
Uh, I want full throttle, setting, none of this setting gear, says Chill Pill. Uh, the Scottish media never want Celtic to win anything. Yeah, Paul, we know that. And that's why I totally, anybody that has anything to do with the Scottish media is, is a sellout. There's lots of other platforms where, and especially with young people that are wanting to get into journalism. You know, you can start your own website and you can you, you can start a blog and whatever and you, and you can get your content out there. But a lot of them try to go down the, the route of companies that have ties with other clubs. That's all I'm saying. Any serious sign of a new keeper? John, no. I don't even think Celtic will have... They'll have three or four keepers in mind and it's just going to come to when the transfer window opens and what keeper they can get. It's as simple as that. They'll go for the best keeper they can and then they'll go for the, their top target and then it'll probably come down to about the third target or something. I hope we get one that's really good. Um, so let's see. Uh, what killer player gets into the Celtic team? Uh, we coped okay in the Levy pitch, so we should be fine. Yep. And uh, Davy says... I'd sign Ida for three million bargain. I think he's going to cost us between about four and five million. I think that they're going to want for him. Um, just going for the noises that's coming out of Norwich sites. Joseph said, Baz, what about oh, will he come back? Uh, yes, he's only he's not, he's not making the team just now because the way that we play, we're, we've got one striker in on the bench. You can't have two strikers on the bench. You've always got to have two wingers on the bench, two defenders on the bench and a striker. There's your five that you're going to bring on. I know you can have more on the bench than that, but that's probably the five that you're going to bring on. So it's unlucky for O. Is O better than Adam Eder? Nah, not at all. Um, not at all. Ange Postacoglu's got a lot to answer for. I mean, for all the good that Ange's done, um, he, he brought in a few players that you've got to question. You've got a question. And if um, if they were that good, why is he not come in for any of them? Celtic, Okomanic and Hearts are right good doing. Yep, we do that. Uh, Kyogo is looking sharp lately, yes. And he's been talking about Brendan Rodgers and he's been talking about how he's helped his game. Um, nothing has changed. We still need to win all the games. Yes, this is 100% true. 100% true. Uh, I think O will come good, says Paul Bears. I think he will come good. He's a young player. He's got an uh, international manager. In fact, has he not just resigned as international manager? He's got an international manager who believes in him. So we'll wait and see. Mark Boy, 352 Baz. Have another striker on the bench. Well, yep. Mark, you don't need to, you don't need to talk to me about that. Um I'm a three five two man all day long. All day long, I think that Celtic should be playing with two strikers. Celtic would annihilate teams, absolutely annihilate teams. This, when teams have got this low block, if you're playing three five two, you, you you can basically have you can have five around the box. You've got your two strikers in the box, right? You've got your two wingers coming down the wide on on the outskirts of the box. You've then got another midfield player coming into the middle of the box, running in late. That's five players in and around the box rather than the, the nonsense style of trying to bring in two players from midfield into the box and they're running around and they don't really know what they're doing. For me, two strikers all day long. Will will the manager change that? No, he won't. Um, at six million, I'd say there's room to sell Adam either. For 10, is an investment we're selling. Uh, the club with a top-notch coach says something today. But as before it starts, remember, uh, he's, a, he's a big Ange hater. I'm not a big Ange hater. I'm not a big Ange here at all. I think that it was fantastic that what he did. I thought when he was offered the deal, and I, I, I I'll never forgive him for that, I'll be honest. I think when he was offered the deal that he was so early on before the cup final and he refused to accept the deal, he refused to talk about signings, he, 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 he earmarked players that were to come in in the summer. And then he turned around and told that Lowell and Dermot, before the cup final started, that he wanted to talk to Spurs. He's dead to me you now. He's dead to me. I don't hate him. I just think that he's, he was a journeyman. People that, I mean, we've got family that stay in Australia, and they said, look, he was always going to do that. Um, we've The missus has got relatives and uncles who stays in Australia and says, look, that's been Anne Jolly's career. He'll do the same to Spurs. 
he'll do the same to Spurs. He'll take them so far and then he'll just he'll walk. Do you know he'll he'll, he'll not agree. He'll he'll go to another club. Um, it's just what he does. It's the Australian in him. So anyway, I don't hear him. I just think that he's dead to us and we move on. I mean, do we keep on going and Ronnie? Look, let's face it. Ronnie Dyla must have been about as successful as Ange Postacoglu. I'm just saying, how many trophies did Ronnie Dyla win? Do we look back on the Ronnie Dyla era and say, fucking brilliant manager? No, he's a journeyman. He was part of our history. Ange Postacoglu falls into that same category now. He falls into that same category. Um, Parkhead Boy says Ange was amazing. He was a good manager, but when it comes to Celtic history now, he's part of that history. We don't look back at Ronnie Dyla. For me, Ronnie Dyla years were amazing. Anybody that went, anybody that went to the games during the Ronnie Dyla years, hats off to you. Anybody that had a season ticket, you're a real Celtic fan. To all the people that didn't have Celtic season tickets then, fucking big time Charlies, aren't they? Uh, anyway. Ferguson has ruptured his cruciate. Yeah, Louis Ferguson, Louis Ferguson, who's now playing in Italy. I seen that earlier. Uh, Benny Offer Boy says, I up front, Kyogo free, roll behind him. Uh, but who do you leave out? Well, this is it. You need to change the formation. You need to change to a 3 5 2 to do that. So get him out on loan, talking about own. Uh, Chow, he'll be choking to stay. Ida is keeping Kyogo out the Ireland lineup, remember? Come on, Baz Andrews. Amazing. He was the, He was a good manager. If he was amazing, and if he was, why are Spurs not going to win anything this year? Spurs won't win anything. Tom Mac, Baz, you're correct. We just love Ange more. Yeah, it's true. It's true. We love Ange more. But he's, he's all part of our history now. He's part of our history. So. We move on. O will be off at the end of the season. Oh, I've opened that window. And the pollen's fallen back down. Great. Who replaces Matt O'Reilly? Says John. That's easy. Paolo Bernardo. That was one thing that Ange Postacoglu was good for. He always brought in players who would be replacements for players that, were, that was going to leave. And Paolo Bernardo... Paolo Bernardo is is that player, unfortunately. Whether you like him or not. Baz, are you happy? I'm always happy, yes. The pollen's just getting to me because I opened that window. But no, cool. Chopo says, John, I hope he stays for another year. Uh, talking about, who are we talking about? Adam Eder or O? O. O will be going at the end of the season. Spurs will never win a trophy, ever. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Um, right, we are on... How many thumbs up we've got? Live stream. I need to go on to YouTube. Um, let's do this. That game might have kicked off yet. I could have watched a little bit of football while chatting, but it's not. Ten Hag is finished. I tell you, I'd love to have a channel that does 97,000 views in six hours. 97,000 views in six hours. Do you know how much channel, how much money that channel makes? Unbelievable. Hats off to the United Stand folk. Um, right, where am I? Live. And uh, click here. We have many thumbs up. We've only got 98 thumbs up. Get the thumbs up before I am done and dusted for this evening. Fifteen thousand eight hundred and fifty-one subscribers. We are trying to hit the sixteen thousand subscriber mark before the end of the season, and then next season we want to ramp up. We want to hit twenty thousand subscribers next season. So the game is on, as they say. Right. Let me just go back onto this. Get some of the comments. Sorry, Baz, that's my fault regarding O and either Adam either. This Bucky boy. Uh, I'm not happy because I'm working. And Dunn's the night. Ah, oh, the night shift. You should get 100,000, mate. Davey, you would only get 100,000 if you started talking about other football teams. Other football teams. 
a Celtic site, there's no chance a Celtic site would ever hit 100,000. I know too, I know that much about YouTube and, and the audience is too small. Baz, I think you've got the most subscribers out of the Celtic podcast. No, I don't. Um, that goes to that goes to uh, the other journal guy and Celtic fan, uh, the Celtic, uh, what is it? The original one, the original Celtic Ryan, it goes to Ryan, and um, who's the ones that done the, that used to Celtic TV, Celtic TV. That's who it goes to, Celtic TV. So yeah, it goes to Ryan one one eight and Celtic TV, and also it went to Hill Hill sixty seven. Went to Hill Hill sixty seven. So yeah, but then Hill Hill sixty seven decided to go and get other jobs, which is unfortunate. Which is unfortunate. And then Hamish has now got his own channel, Celtic AM. And they do work with Celtic Way. Don't even get me started about that lot. <laughs> we should be part of nothing together with this, with the Rangers, right? We should be part of nothing. As part of a club, part of a club, we, are, we, we say that we're part of nothing. We are not a part of a union with them. For a site to be connected for me is just okay. Anyway, right. Line one, right? Uh, a sound, but too vanilla. Too vanilla. Oh, a Celtic state of mind. Yeah, a Celtic state of mind. Uh, Paul John, but a lot of his subscribers haven't weren't Celtic fans. A lot of his subscribers came from the music industry way before. Um, so that's where a lot of his came from. But yeah, he's got a good channel as well. Uh, where he promotes all his Celtic nights. And it's also a limited company. Is a Celtic state of mind? <laughs> Go and check that. <laughs> I prefer middle-aged men for, for my, to deliver my Celtic info. Says B. Thanks. I think. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they share a sponsor. No, they don't just share a sponsor, Jeff. They are run by the same company. I, I'm going to put it out there. They're run, they don't share a sponsor. They are owned by the same company. They are employees of the company. They are owned by the same company. Go and do some groundwork. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Chilbo says, Selfco will have to uh, will have a go against Dundee. Uh, the gaps for Dundee will exploit their defence. Yes. Uh, I think uh, it's all clickbait and views. Uh, I do that on TikTok and Facebook. Uh, Bucky Boy, I've, I, there's nothing wrong with clickbait as long as you follow up. Clickbait works to a certain extent if you follow up what, what is the clickbait title. Why do you think Mr. Beast, are you going to get me talking about YouTube now? Mr. Beast took YouTube and took what clickbait titles and he says, like, I, I spend 100 days in a fucking locked room. But he does the video where he spends 100 days and it counts down every day. You know, as, as long as the clickbaity title follows up by what is in the content, well, it's not it's not clickbait. It's only media types that go, oh, it's clickbait and it's passionate. It's no fucking oh, fuck off. Anyway, Baz, you're not that old. Thank God, Peter. Thank God. <laughs> I don't feel, I feel it. Um, I never knew that about them being owned by a hunt company. I don't think it's owned by a hunt company, but the, it's the company. <laughs> it's fucking Rangers written all over it, isn't it? It's the company owns the Rangers Review and the Celtic Way. So it's easy. Mr. Beak was a grammar geek. Yes, he was a gamer geek. Mr. Beast, when he was a young lad, it was just, it was, fa it was a fantastic little channel. And hats off to him. The first guy that's going to be a billionaire off of YouTube. And do you know that Mr. Beast will never film in 4K? He will never film in 4K. He wants to keep it at 1080 because it's YouTube. He does not want YouTube to become like the mainstream media. He wants to keep it as YouTube, but he just sees getting 100 million views per video is a big deal. Anyway, uh, Celtic State of Mind is a great channel. Uh, JPD watch for good courses. Yes, he does. He does. And I'd never say a bad word about his channel. Not a chance. Um, he's a good guy. He's a fife for life himself. Comes from Dunfermline. Fantastic part of the world. And he does a lot of good work. He does a lot of good work and raises a lot of money. 
and especially for young Jamie Tierney. And Jamie Tierney's granddad drinks down at Paddy's Point. That is point. Anyway, um, Celtic uh, State of Mind promote our Celtic podcast. Hats off to them. Yep, they do, Michael. They do that. They, and, and fair play to anybody that wants to promote a Celtic podcast. You know, there's plenty of room out there for because the amount of information that that um, people want to get about Celtic is unbelievable. Yeah, when Celtic, when the Celtic, when they start banging out music, just switch off. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear uh, when the hoops slip up and the huns are all over it uh, they make an arse of, of advantage your reactions are deaf over a tune of course for look this is this is all entertainment this platform that you're watching on YouTube is an entertainment platform it's an entertainment platform it's as simple as that you've got to remember that Celtic State of Mind was a music channel a music kind of based channel before it, it got heavily into the Celtic podcast stuff. I mean, it was anyway. I stayed in the Republic, Republic of Dunfermline, the original God's country, Balfarg. Balfarg. Anyway, I don't think Celtic channels on YouTube will ever become profitable the way the, the English ones have. Uh, Celtic 88, you're right, they won't. Uh, because you don't have the worldwide audience, unfortunately. You can have Celtic fans all around the world, but when you look at the amount of people that tune in from different countries that watch Man United channels, for instance. Uh, you know, Mark Goldbridge, his channels, you know, they're, they're different level stuff. I mean, they're doing 20, 20, 30 grand a month. But then there's, I know another guy who comes from Glasgow who makes around six and seven grand a month that has nothing to do with football. And he only does it part time. But it's his full time job. Do you know what I mean? And then there's another guy that comes down for down south. He's making twenty grand a month. You know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of other ways. There's a lot of other ways. Uh, what's your favorite style engineer of music bands? Oh, sound phonetic, Jesus. Um, if you I, I, I was in a band once called Bass X. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Is, um Supporting the elderly. Uh, so it's a charity weekend uh, to write after tax bill. Lywell's ego. All I'm going to say is they're a limited company. So they, they are a limited company. So um, whatever. Whatever. Um, Celtic World. Yep. Uh, and did you see my video on a Celtic World? Did you see my, my appearance on Celtic World? Anyway, right. Do you like Oasis? Yes, I like Oasis. Hi, Oasis are good. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. 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 Anyway, right. Endless selps are worth a watch. I'll be honest. I don't watch a lot of YouTube because I'm too busy. I'm too busy. There's two types of people in life. There's content creators and there's consumers. I create a lot of content. I create a shit lot of content for online. Um, so, yeah. Endless Celts are super. I mean, look at that one. Endless Celts. 20 minute times are magic. See, there's all these channels that I never even knew that were out there. Basically because I've not got the time. I don't have the time to, to do this and watch YouTube and look at information, get information, and then create create content for the other channels I have as well. It's just... It's constant. It's constant. Anyway, let's talk about music on a football podcast. No. <laughs> no. Uh, don't watch YouTube because you're a YouTube mate. Um, yeah, you are YouTube. Yeah. That's it, Davey. I mean, I've, I've got other channels that I do... And they're a lot harder work than this. Um, but they're worth it. They're worth it because it's building a brand. So there's a couple of channels that I need to focus on this year. So anyway, and that's why the majority of my income comes from YouTube because I have more than one channel. And uh, there we go. Look forward to your daily videos. Uh, another channel is as raw. Yeah. I, I just tell it as it is. 
I mean, I just tell it as it is, and I think that that's what people want. Uncontrollable laughter, looked up with the dictionary, so it's come through Celtic fans, wrong about laughing, all things are red, white and blue. Uh, Celtic were good for Ange and vice versa. Yes, this is very true. Gordon, they were that. Uh, Small-minded, not only to wish uh, good previous companions, he moves on to bigger league. Not really a mercenary. No, he's not a mercenary, but he's in the Celtic past, and that's all I was saying. Um, we don't look back, and we're going over this again, it's like we don't look back at Ronnie Dyla and say that he was a mercenary. You know, Ronnie Dyla went on to have a fantastic career in management. You know, he went to America to manage football. He went back to Europe to manage in football. So, you know, it's um, it's horses for courses. It's horses for courses. Anyway, hail, hail, Baz says, who really cares, Baz? Uh, I thought I heard you on, a vid on another channel the other day. Well, Yogi Boy, you might have just heard me on another channel. I think Clementine's brain cells blew yesterday. Yes, I think they did. Uh, what are the other channels? Uh, there's channels that do not have my name or face on it, and I want to keep it that way. There are two channels that do have my name, my full name, and there's another channel that has... Um, no, they're not football-related. Well, there's one football-related, but it's... I've not really pushed it. I've not really pushed it. Uh, you work hard, Baz. Enjoy your content, but obviously the Celtic stuff and John Moore. Yep, Lorna, you know, you know the other channel, and um, I'm going to do. I'm doing a full day filming for that other channel tomorrow. So hence the reason the live tomorrow night might not come from this laptop. It will come from a phone, and it might come from a Irish pub in Benidorm. Yes, Benidorm, for my sins. Oh, jeez. Uh, right, uh, here is anything interesting going on with the Celts. Uh, we'll just get some Celtic news. Just before we leave, Celtic told they have no chance of winning the league without 12 million rated player. It is a headline. Celtic told that they have no chance of winning the league without Dyson Maida. Hmm, interesting one. Interesting one. Um, win every Scottish Premier Side, uh, yeah, Lewis Ferguson reveal he's devastated because he's been ruled out of 2024. That's not why that's nothing to do with Celtic. Uh, former Celtic boss Martin O'Neill, incredible verdict on Rangers title race slip up. Chris Sutton delivers, delivers a stark warning to Celtic, and Celtic have put out the St. Mirren highlights this evening on the official Celtic site. So not really any Celtic news kicking around. There was the stuff at the beginning of the channel. The referee for the game this weekend is going to be the only one and only. Don Robertson will be in the middle for the semi-final. He takes charge at Hamden. He will be joined by Graham Stewart and Stephen Trainer. I wonder if he's related to Jim, Jim Trainer. Do you think? Do you think? Uh, David Dickinson on VAR duty with Greg Aitken and Andrew McWilliam. That is it for this evening. We have been going on for quite a bit, haven't we? Where are we? Where, I can't even find what screen I'm on. Um, Pat, what's been going on in the chat? What have I missed? John Lennon would have been 83 today if Dressers was the, was the hit man. <laughs> oh, dear. Pat McGuire. Ah, jeez. Ah, ah. ah, Always a good end. My son and wife moved up to Spain because of you, Baz, and Carl watched me on the the lockdown. There you go. There you go. Did they? Northampton Town. Well, there you go. Ah, it's a fantastic channel. It's got lots of good information on it. But yes. Yes. That was all to be about our journey. It was never to me. It was never to get the 10,000 plus subscribers that it now has. We need to get that one up to 15 to beat this. I remember one day that this the, our other channel was actually ahead of the Celtic channel. There we go, how things turn around. Anyway, on that note, that's enough of that for this evening. Have a peaceful night, Baz, and everyone. Uh, what's about columns not getting the zombie game again? Uh, well, you don't know about that. Uh, Celtic women played well at the weekend, they did that. Rest in peace, John Lennon. And God bless the 97. Yes, it was today. A long time ago that people went to a game at Hillsborough and sadly did not come home. A bit like Alison, the Celtic fan who went to the Celtic Park, her beloved Celtic Park at the weekend and took ill and died at Celtic Park. Some of the comments that I've seen from her friends said that if she could have 
wish to have died in any place, it would have been Celtic Park, and I think she got her wish that way. But today is the day when 97 Liverpool fans went to Hillsborough and did not come home. Should never happen. Thankfully, stadiums are a lot better than they were back then. So, yeah. John, the truck driving legend, just look up. I'm not telling you, I can't see it. Anyway, rest in peace, Alison, rest in peace. The 97 who went to a game and didn't come home. I don't like ending on a sad note. Yeah, I don't like ending on a sad note. This league is for Alison. Yes, it is. It is that. The league is for Alison. Anyway, up the Celts, up the good guys. Rangers are shite. Rangers died. God bless every single one of you. And on that note, have a fantastic evening. Celtic fans all around the world.